special webinar uh, brought to you uh, by Exchange for Media. Uh, the webinar today will discuss a very important topic, the, that of influencer marketing. We all know about how important role they play in our marketing efforts. So we have a panel that's going to precisely discuss it. The topic mm -hmm. today is prioritizing influencer marketing for brand building. It is presented by Mad Influence in association with Exchange for Media. And I have with me my panelists. I want to introduce them. Uh, with me is uh, Kushbu Benani, content influencer marketing and brand advocacy head, uh, Diageo India. Uh, welcome, Miss uh, Benani. Uh, I have uh, Somashri uh, Bose Avasti, Head of Marketing, Home Care, Personal Wash, and Air Care Godridge Consumer Products Limited. Uh, I have uh, Shivani Kapila, Influencer and Storyteller. Uh, Vineet Sharma, uh, Director of Marketing Hi, Juices, PepsiCo India. Hi, everyone. Uh, Gautam Madhavan, CEO of Mad Influence. And we are going to discuss a whole range of issues. Uh, I want to first begin uh, uh, with you, uh, uh, Mr. Sharma. Um, uh, tell me, uh, we are in an era where we have explored all kinds of marketing channels and suddenly this uh, influencer marketing bit that was catching up uh, got a little bit of uh, a certain kind of, uh, I won't use the word backlash, but it was uh, having a different conversation. Tell me, has it, uh, how has that shaped the conversation in the influencer space as far as brands are concerned? No, I think, uh, thank you, uh, Rohil. I think it's a great question. So whenever we want to communicate anything from the brand, so it, I think the world has changed from what it was earlier. Earlier, it was more around a broadcast medium to say, okay, I, ha I will say something through a TV medium or something else, and we don't expect anyone to sort of react to it. But increasingly, it's now with the digital world, with everything being digital forward, uh, the process of engagement is always two ways where we, where we will talk about something and we can always expect that there will be a reaction from the consumer, etc. But therefore, I think what is important, what we've been doing is it's very important when we, as brands, we speak, we also get a sense of a social listening to say, what are the, what is the sentiment on the ground? And therefore, how do we pick up something which is topical uh, and leverage influencers which have a high credibility and build a very proprietary brand, brand point of view on that again uh, what is what is very critical is to be organic and not forced and therefore for example we picked up an occasion i'll give you an example of a slicey patty idea that we did in summers this year so in summers what we realized was there was a lot of uh, craving for mango and uh, people were really looking forward to getting that man the patties of mango or the boxes of mangoes that they had and we actually did a campaign which was on social media. We started off with Katrina actually sending a, a slice ki peti to Arjun. And then we actually did a lot of influencers who got those peties and how they said they were looking for craving for mango. And uh, here's something which, which sort of satisfies that craving for mango. So it didn't have a very overt, uh, so as to say, this is what slice is. The, the tonality in the TV medium was that slice is very thick, etc. But it does more in terms of context of occasion building and was a more seamless fit. So as long as uh, the fit which we get with the topical topical location is organic, I don't think there's any issue. Having said that, even as we put campaigns on air, we track that very closely and ensure that we respond, respond appropriately depending on uh, how the consumer sentiment is. Right. I want to come to you, uh, Ms. Benani. Uh, my question to you is that, how do you see influencer marketing vis-a-vis -vis the brand uh, recall you know and how much of a belief do you have as a brand in this marketing approach um so royal considering i head influencer marketing i definitely have a lot of confidence on what you know it does for the business and the brand um i think that you know in what you know just building on to what couple say uh sorry we need said um there is a point of view that brand needs to own, which is like a proprietary point of view. Now, how you build that, you know, point of view through different 360 touch points is where the influencers come and play a big role. So while, you know, if you're doing your television comms or your digital comms, you might be talking about, you know, your liquid, your product, your packaging. But when you work with mm -hmm. influencers, you take the angle of like building aspiration through like affiliation, to like who they are, what their personalities are, how you are authentically integrating your brand, you know, with their personality so that, you know, the audience that the influencer talks to starts developing a connect with the brand because ultimately, like, you know, 
people trust people people don't trust brands as much they would trust other people so how do you leverage you know the connect that the influencers have with their audiences if you know the brands can find that sweet spot where it's not overtly branded but you're not losing saliency as a brand by you know dialing into a influencer's authentic narrative is how you actually leverage influencers in the best possible way right 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 perfect uh, same question to you uh, ms wasti i just want to understand from you uh, how do you see influencer marketing adding uh, value to brand recall uh, connecting brands with consumers what is your perspective on that okay the question is that how much of belief uh, do brands have in influencer marketing and how does your brand look at it um going two years back i started uh, i was on the other side of the table working associated with google as hr and today it's a turning point in my life where i am an influencer um talking about brands in this session i think it's very important as correctly mentioned by winnie and kushbu it is very important for an influencer to connect with to his or her audience and create that niche mm -hmm. where the uh, the community that we are adhering to believe in us trust in us and that's where the influencer marketing has stepped into the picture and uh, to be very honest this is a new genre that i'm ex exploring and it is very exciting and and demands a humongous uh, motivation encouragement and uh, you know a uh, bucket full of ideas to you know build into this space right 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 see uh, I, i'm sorry i'm uh, joining in from a smaller screen so i couldn't see that so much is not there so i mean multi screen world today the smaller screen turn uh but uh, thanks for your comment uh, i want to come to you uh, uh, gotham uh, of course you are the man who understands and believes in this uh, how have brands uh, readjusted or realigned themselves with this marketing uh, approach uh, over the years if i may say over the last two years yes i think over the last two two and a half years uh, uh like first of all hi everyone uh, i think i'm audible right yes so yes, uh, Yes. So over the last two years, uh, there was no concept of uh, like the, the boom of influencer marketing. I think came in 2019, to be really honest. And in 2018, right. it was all about uh, bloggers first. Uh, then mm -hmm. the concept of uh, Instagrammers and YouTubers, like you know, where it was a large associations. Earlier, an association with 20,000, 50,000 views was a very big thing. Today. uh no plan starts uh with a 10 million uh pack like you know 10 million is like okay that's billion ka plan bhejo right you no know, that is so so normal these days so having said that from a shift from a 10000 view or 50000 view plan to a 10 million and now we have uh, like you know with the rise of social media and the uh, all thanks to jio baba we have uh, like you know we have the uh, the scalability of content to to the right masses because now the users have also increased so definitely uh, the the mass reach through influencer marketing has diverse it has diversified and it has massified if, if that's even a word right so uh, having said that uh, influencer marketing has definitely taken a hit and it has it has created new um, areas for different people from people like shivani it has created a entire ecosystem she was with google before and now she's 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 left that beautiful space and come to a new space which is now about creating content and planning thinking for new ideas creating new plans for the uh, social media and now sending out and people liking engaging and you know spreading hate sometimes you know but people are still engaging at, at the end of the thing people like us it has created where we are like you know trying to curate influencers we are trying to curate brands and sort of bridge their experiences between influencers and brands and people like vineet and uh, khushbu they like you know i'm sure khushbu might must have not done influencer marketing 10 years back right she must have been in the marketing space uh, doing so many great things but influencer marketing has definitely added on to the space that is more valuable and yet less cost effective like it is it is yet being cost effective at the at end of the day cost matters so having said that like uh, of course we have the great planners sitting here so i'll uh, they will agree to me on this that whatever end of the day right. cost matters and the impact matters right so 
it both is both positive and i think india is yet india is yet to burst that bubble and it is yet to reach that uh, like the the all time high is not yet re- uh, reached for the indian market at least for influencer marketing i think it's just going to grow and grow and grow and grow so just to add uh, to Sorry, uh, Rohel, I was just saying that just to add to um, something that Gautam mentioned, I think what happened initially was when influencer marketing started, it was like, you know, almost like, you know, talking only to the metro audience, to the tier one audience or what you would, you know, classify as the SECA audience. And then the phenomenon of geo happened and TikTok happened, which is where suddenly influencer marketing started talking to the Bharat. you know the tier 2 towns and i think that's one of the big you know sh- shifts that have happened which because of which the numbers that we talk on influencer marketing today are significantly different to what we used to talk like say 5 years back right right uh mr sharma my question to you is that the way i mean it's just inspired from what uh, mr madhavan said when we look at the use of influencer marketing uh, Uh, vis-a-vis to our global counterparts brands how mature are we in its use and second uh, have we narrowed down influencer the term to cricketers and bollywood stars only or are we also looking from the brand perspective on a more uh, wide based you know broad based kind of influencers uh, in the definition so your audio is muted sir Many of you are on mute. Yes. So first of all, uh, the I think the internet has been a big leveler. So it doesn't matter whether you are in New York or in Baramanki now. Pr- pretty much you have access to same kind of inf- information. So I think the pace and the uh, the point which Gautam said or Kushbu said, I think the pace at which we are moving to come at par with the global right. counterparts is amazing in terms of in terms of access, in terms of in terms of the kind of content that we watch. Uh, so that's that's become a huge leveler. on the second part of the question which you had to say how how is it that uh the role of celebs versus i would say influencers if, if i get it correct say what is the role of celebs and uh, is it only about ticket stars or bollywood personalities or is it about influencers i think each of them uh, has a very important role to play uh and for example the when you I, i'll take the again i'll take the example of slicing we have got katrina as a brand ambassador and therefore she is synonymous with right. slice in terms of in terms of whatever whatever she does so when we did the slice we, right. we started off with katrina actually posting it because they also give you a reach which is far higher in terms of in terms of getting that key message which goes across but at the same time when you want to build affinity with a a, a smaller segment so we actually it's not enough to just post one thing with katrina and then leave it at there just to ensure that idea has reach and longevity then actually we got this whole slice ki peti idea where actually a lot of influencers pusha gapla and then that was a lot of category influencers first posted the same idea then the then also a lot of micro influencers also posted the same idea so the idea is with this you can have an idea which keeps you engaged uh for a much longer period of time and with content which can be very topical i think that's what influencer marketing does or allows us to really be uh, allows us to do which a typical traditional approach of saying one post a year or or let's say one tvc a year it doesn't allow you to engage consistently leveraging topical content uh, is what i would say right uh, miss benani i want to ask you since you uh, have bring in a lot of insights from uh, the influencer marketing side how mature is the use of this channel in india compared uh, as the same question the global counterparts and what is there to improve are there areas which can be improved and what are those areas in your observation so um, rohana honestly think that influence started across the world in the same time there might be like a year year and there where you know some markets would be slightly more mature than india but i don't mm-hmm. think you know from where we are at the content development stage or a reach stage with influencers we are behind any of the markets mm-hmm. globally in fact i think in compared right. to a lot of markets we are ahead of the curve um it was it, this is not like right. television or you know, cable tv which where which came mm-hmm. like you know in the western world a much ahead of you know how it came in india so we're pretty at par to where you know globally the trends are on influencer marketing 
um, right. what is interesting is that um, now influencer marketing is starting to break out into different different um, platform led content strategies so you would have like influencers or youtubers and are, you know what we consider creators and then you go to instagram and you would have the lifestyle influencers and then you would have like a certain bunch which you know we used to qualify them as tiktokers so i mean now they've started from a trend perspective they've started now it's become that big that it has started breaking down into its own specific niches uh, where the brands have started choices saying that if i have a passion point i want to play on or i have like a occasion context that i want to play in then i can actually work with a very specific set of influencers who carry appeal within that subset so i think that's the next wave that's coming within influencer marketing right uh, Ms. Kapil, I have to ask you, what is what are the areas of improvement in uh, as far as influencer marketing is concerned from the content creator sites as well? What is your observation? What are the areas that can be improved to make it more effective? I am a mid uh, mid era creator, so when this content creation and influence influential world came in India, I was not a creator then, but I jumped in. So I have seen creation being derived from inspirational uh, creators to now becoming India as, as becoming trendsetter creators. I've seen that shift where I, I've seen getting inspired from a video and now I have the capacity of, you know, building into uh, an own uh, zone and that has come through the time, through the development in our own, uh, uh, you know, influencer world. I, have, I, I personally am a person who was a nine to five job uh, kind of person who actually studied for seven years and worked out for five years to get into Google's office for interview. Interview, And today I'm an entrepreneur. Today I'm a businesswoman who creates content, earns through uh, influencing, uh, brand influencing right. that has come through my way. And uh, I remember starting up as a barter creator to uh, somebody who was, who was just doing it by because there's a brand there involved. And today I have another set of uh, commitments and delivery deliverables turnaround times to accomplish. So I have grown with due course of time as a creator and I'm sure the entire society has seen the shift or the drift that has brought in. Uh, and I'm really happy that we have uh, uh, mentors like uh, like you guys here. Everybody who's sitting here, Gotham is here. So uh, we are able to do this because we, everybody is believing in innovation. That's that's what I believe. A new set that everybody is right. ready to experiment. Right. Uh, Mr. Madhavan, uh, my question to you is slightly different from a different perspective. Uh, of late, I won't name uh, that uh, person, you know, but uh, there was a certain kind of uh, uh, people started looking at, re-looking at influencers, the definition, because of maybe, you know, it can be interfered the number of likes is not the only measure and number of views is not only measure are there more are brands become have brands become more demanding uh, as far as the impact of influencers is concerned is the metric right uh, whatever it was so far is there any improvement in the metric that is there see i'll uh, to be honest i'll not call the current uh, like of course uh, the major brands that, that are investing in influencer marketing, I don't see their metric uh, being captured as wrong. I'll not term it wrong, but I'll say definitely that that is not the only metric to see us, right? Um, mm -hmm. but, and I'm, I'm sure I'm, we have seen that shift as uh, uh, Kushbu was also mentioning a little while before, like you know, a little uh, back that you know, now it is not about how many views and how many comments are there. It's also about uh, how organically and how subtly you promote, right? It's not that you have a big logo back there inside that video and you're, you, the next day you're, you're, you're sold out, right? It's not going to happen, right? Uh, now, all the, like, you know, uh, earlier there was a concept that uh, you have to integrate our brand for 25 seconds at least in a five minute video, right? Now, it is not like that. Like, you know, now I'm seeing that 25 seconds being distributed in the first five seconds, then in the middle five seconds, and in the middle five seconds, in the last five seconds. So it's like, now it's not like a direct, uh, like an integration where you have to do this, this is the script. Now brands are being more open, uh, like, you know, in terms of they're letting, they're setting the theme 
and now they're letting the influencers think of the script. But of course, one big advice to the brands, SMEs, and all the entrepreneurs and marketers, planners mm-hmm. out there, that we should mm-hmm. actually let uh, you, like you, know, you take any, any influencer agency, influencer agency's job is not to create content, right? It is the influencer's job to create content. So when we talk about let, we, we, they know their audience better than me and better than you, right? So when we actually go there and create, like, like, you know, have a theme set for the campaign, it might be a revival campaign, it might be a launch campaign, it might be a sustenance campaign. But having said that, whatever campaign it might be, it is uh, very important for the brand to understand that they don't know their audience. They don't know the influencer's audience as much as the influencer knows their brand and knows their audience. So having said that, views, numbers do matter. But I think Instagram has given a big uh, hit for all the planners out there because now there is no views uh, that you can see uh, apart from like, you know, there are uh, hardly any accounts left with view viewerships. Uh, even that is going out. So now the concept of views is also changing, right? So the first it happened in Australia. Now it's, it has started happening in India. So uh, the concept of viewership, that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out is now gone. Yeah, how many views are there, right? Now only way you can see it is that, okay, what is the engagement by the comments? And comments also, there are three types of comments. One is positive, neutral, and negative. Positive being amazing, which is logical to the uh, to the content that is being posted. For example, if it is slice, wow, amazing campaign, amazing packaging, amazing, uh, like, you know, whatever, whatever the messaging, if they connect to it. But if the same person is, if the another person is messaging, wow, so hot, wow, so beautiful, like, you know, it is not, not at all connecting to a brand like slice. Right. But it is not negative also. Right. The third one is like, yeah, Rieto, I don't like this influencer. You're so bad. I don't like you. The face is not good. Like, you know, that, those kind of comments that neither promotes, neither uh, says anything good about it. So it's always negative. So that's the, so the only way to judge to a good, true engagement is now one of the main ways is comments to so analyze the comments and understand what their audience uh, typo is. But yeah, I, I hope I answered that question, Rogan. To our audience, I want to just say that uh, this webinar is brought together, brought by sorry, Mad Influence and Exchange for Media, and we will be taking some questions towards the end. You can post your question on social media and send us on Zoom. So I want to come to you, uh, Mr. Sharma, that, uh, so we talk about influencers and all, but what goes into choosing the right influencer? What are the factors that you look at while choosing the influencer that represents your brand? So uh, I think it starts from the objective to say what is the objective of the brand in terms of this example. Uh, so it's, if I have an objective of saying I want to make more people connect with a particular attribute of a product. So then I, I might pick up, depending on the attributes, pick up the product. I'll give you an example. So for example, on Tropicana, when we said we wanted to pick up something which builds authenticity of the brand. Therefore, we picked up the influencers by default. Uh, is a great way because you will pick up someone who's authentic and the messaging was to say, eventually it was about Asli versus Hawa Bazi. And therefore the messaging has to be someone who can pull that off to say someone who can almost have a spoof of saying two different kinds of people mm. this is authentic. This thing. So you, you will, first of all, you will look at the uh, people who can actually, the second will obviously also be the question of reach. There'll, there, there'll be a factor of saying, how many people do you reach? So you might have someone who's a great connect, but for example, let's mm. say I, I want to talk to new, uh, let's say on Quaker, I want to talk to a nutritionist mother. Uh, so, but that person who I pick up should be someone who has a great reach. So you can pick up someone who's probably, who's fitting in that role, but also has a great reach. And the third is also, I think in terms of content saying, for example, I want to put up something which is funny and engaging. And therefore you will pick, look at the people who've done that well, extremely well in the past. And therefore you'll find out uh, people who can really draw people in with the kind of emotions. For example, when we thought, this idea of authentic versus real, we thought uh, by picking up comedy as a genre, we can really bring it alive and we can connect with audiences very strongly. So therefore we picked up who are the biggest influencers that genre who can bring alive this thought in a very contextual way. So if I have to summarize, it would start from the objective. And then I would say, what is the context that you want to establish? And therefore, who are the people who can do that best with a significant reach? Right. 
Uh, Ms. Benani, uh, same questions about the factors that brands look at. Um, how do you approach uh, narrowing down, down on the right influencers that represent your brand? So, Ruhel, it's about, you know, um, just building on to what Vineet said, um, it's about what your objective as a brand are. So sometimes, you know, for example, I have like a portfolio of brands that I play with. So if I'm working on a brand which sits absolutely at the top end of the luxury quotient, something like a tanker, then my job is not to go wide with the reach because I don't want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to, a, you know, I want to talk through an influencer who drives, you know, certain affinity between among the luxury consumers. So I would pick influencers who are who have follow base which is more luxury oriented and the content is you know usually sitting in that skew versus like say for example right now because of lockdown and covid we wanted to you know encourage people to try drinks at home you know like make cocktails at home now that is almost like creating a new behavior so when you're looking at creating a new behavior then you want to go with influencers which are like almost what would qualify as celebs because that's where it's easiest to, you know, start creating like, you know, different behaviors, start influencing people to change behaviors. So it goes back to what the objective is at the brand level and then kind of like, you know, find the right influencer set, you know, which can give you the best engagement. So personally, I don't believe in the matrix of views and reach as far as influencers are concerned. It's about engagement. I rather you know, treat engagement like that 10, 15% engagement that comes from influencers versus like if the same money was spent on digital comms, I mean, my highest benchmark would possibly be two or 3% engagement. So if, you know, with that lens, how do I evaluate influencers and, you know, to meet my objectives is the framework that we would look at while using influencers. Right. Uh, Ms. Kapila here, you would bring a different perspective, you know, uh, from the other side. Tell me, what has been your, uh, um, you know, observation about how brands choose influencers? Uh, do you think there have uh, there are certain things they could uh, relook at? Are they doing it in the right way? Do you think there is a shift happening? What has been your uh, take on it? Well, um, the first thing that I would like to, um, you know, join uh, Gotham with is uh, it is very important for for brands to let. Uh, content creators have that uh, flexibility where they can create content for the brand. Um, where Gautam correctly said that an agency cannot drive the co content style. It's very difficult. And when when we, uh, you know, join into that content creation for the brand, um, I, I as, as, as representing, I think, a couple of influences here, the influences, uh, uh, so I, I personally feel that if we get that uh, choice of, you know, driving the content, we have the basic guideline and driving the content will be really interesting. When it comes to, uh, you know, exp experiencing brands uh, and, you know, content creation, um, yes, there has been shift. Yes, there has been, uh, you know, development, uh, a new new uh, content coming in for, 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 for the brands, for the influencers and when it comes to brand picking of influencers i always thought that it's it's always about the kind of engagement the type of content and the and the uh, fan base that you have what kind of people like looking your content for me it's more of a family audience that i aim at um, so i purposely do that on and off because that is the audience that i always want to have across my content uh, so that the brands that are easily uh, located to lifestyle can come to me. So that, that's one of the reasons that I drive that content. So coming back from right, influencers, right. I think uh, we also drive and pitch in to our fan base. Why? Because we want brands to get associated with us. Right. Uh, thank you. At this stage, I want to welcome Ms. Uh, Somashri Bose Avasti, Head Marketing, Home Care, Personal Wash and Air Care, uh, Godrej uh, Consumer Products Limited. Welcome, uh, ma'am, to this discussion. We have been into a few questions, but uh, we still have a long way to go. So I want to ask you, I want to begin asking you my first question is, uh, what is your belief uh, as far as influencer marketing as a effective, you know, uh, connect with consumers is con concerned? How much of belief is there uh, for your brand? Uh, see, the way I look at it is it, uh, 
first of all, the brand has to be extremely judicious while choosing uh, an influencer, mm -hmm. you know, uh, right. because more often than not, the choice always typically, how do you assess an influencer is by their reach numbers, by their follower numbers, and you know, how much engagement uh, they are creating, etc. But very often, these top influencers also are the most exposed ones. For example, they're usually mm -hmm. always visible and they seem to be endorsing everything that is coming along right so it it's a bit of a catch-22 situation while it can give you that visibility whether consumers are really believing it or not is then the question so then it really depends on what is the brand looking out for is brand just look being over there you know wanting this influencer to just create that buzz around the brand or is riley right uh, you know sort of trying to create a credible messaging around it that really depends for example uh, very honestly if it's something around health and fitness possibly some of the famous uh, famous celebrities uh, i mean i wouldn't like to name them but then you know sometimes you might go for famous celebrities but a lot of times it creates that disbelief that their lives is not equal to our lives over here as a consumer that we are seeing it at that point of time you might want to go for micro cell micro influencers who are closer to your uh, your kind of uh, reality of life and you want to believe uh, you know what they are saying because then you say that yes whatever this guy is saying or this guy's reality i can uh, it 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 uh, sort of relates to me i can relate to it so it really depends on what is the brand's objective when they are selecting the influencer it's it's a very uh, tricky right. kind of thing depends on every brief Right. I just want to ask you a quick question, which I uh, had asked them earlier also, like uh, what factors do you look at when you choose influencer for your brand? Maybe a quick, uh, you know, some points you could tell, me, tell us uh, about it. Typically, typically uh, the factors always depend on, you know, who is my target consumer and within that target consumer, what is the kind of reach this person has and what is the kind of engagement? Typically, I also look at what is the kind of engagement because it's not just about creating the content, but also creating a content where the people are also responding to you. They're also sort of liking it, commenting on it. That's very, very important. So uh, that's that's my right. major criteria, the reach, the followership, and then the engagement. Great. Uh, Mr. Madhavan, uh, tell me, what is what would you suggest? What would you tell brands, being an expert, uh, how can they improve while, uh, you know, they're, well, they're filtering and choosing the right uh, faces for their brands. What, what is, is there anything they can improve, relook at? So I think, uh, like you know, uh, influencer marketing is now like at least at least for us, it is data driven uh, marketing when when it comes to influencers. So it is everything is like you know uh, with with back backed up data, right? And as uh, Sumashri and everybody in this, like, you know, as They've actually covered all the points uh, from the reach to the target audience to the uh, content specificity. But um, to be honest, what, uh, for example, what one influencer might work for a brand might not be the same uh, with the other influencer, even though they fall in the same reach segment, even if they fall in the same target audience, even if they're like, you know, it's, uh, it's from person to person because, for example, if one person has a million followers and the second person has a million followers, and both of their engagement rate is say 10%, right? So probably you, you're gonna get a lack of people being engaged on that particular piece. But end of the day, how many people are coming back and actually remembering that uh, concept and actually connecting with the brand is probably A influencer being a thousand and the B influencer being 10,000. So, and you're paying the equally the same amount of money to each one of them. Right. But as a marketer, as a planner, you get to understand that through data. Right. So the next campaign or the probably the third campaign, you will not want a A influencer in your campaign because he has not or she has not provided that value uh, to that particular brand. But that does not mean the influencer is bad. That just means that the influencer is not fit for that brand. The audience is not matured or not logical enough for this particular brand. So probably the B influencer is now more connecting to that particular brand and due through data analytics, I think it is much more easier, which we try to do in every campaign uh, saying that how can we do differently, get remain the same 
uh, with the previous campaign, right? So I think that is uh, uh, an add-on to what all of us right right now here rightly said in terms of reach, engagement, target audience, etc. Right. I have this round of questions. Uh, then I go to the audience question, which are pouring in. I want to come to you, uh, Mr. Sharma, that uh, uh, influencers are also high risk. You know, it's also like one sing a single tweet can sometimes, you know, create a certain kind of uh, challenge for the brand. Do you first believe one question? Is it a high risk uh, marketing approach? Uh, number two, what are the broad trends that you think would define influencer marketing? Uh, in the near future? So first of all, I think it's a question of saying, as brands, do you have an option to use only broadcast or do you have an option of a two-way communication? So I don't think as brands, we have an option of using broadcast any longer. And we have to accept that as brands, we want to have a two-way conversation. We want to listen to our consumers. And brands, in fact, share a point of view, but also reflect the popular sentiment, which is there in the, in the culture. So I don't think we can get away by saying we can shut somebody up or we'll just say. So that's the first part. I think we as brands have to acknowledge and uh, reflect, as I said, a popular consumer sentiment. So uh, there's no way of going away from it. It's only going to be increasing further. I think what the second part of the question, how how is it, how I believe it will change in the future. I think eventually with so much media, so much proliferation, which is happening, we've already seen that the entire, that one, homogeneous mass is getting split into various different, I would say what we call as addressable audiences with preferences, with choices, with different passion points. And uh, I believe that will continue further with more and more choices. We'll have a groups of people, or as we sometimes say, tribes of people who are passionate about a particular this thing. There'll be brands who would want to talk to that, those passion, to those tribe of passion, pe passionate people. And they will continue to leverage influencers who possibly hold the most uh, respect and I would say respect, authority and connect with those passion areas. So I think this is only going to go, in, go further where the passion points are going to increase, the connect with passion points are going to increase, increase and the need to have conversations will continue to increase. Right. Um, Miss Avasti, I want to come to you with the same question. Um, what would be the broad trends uh, that would define influencer marketing? And uh, also, is it a high risk investment? Uh, sometimes, you know, which forces brand, brands to kind of sometimes uh, pause and think, you know, as we have seen of late. Do you think that's the case? Uh, I mean, I think recently we have seen quite a few examples of that happening and, uh, you know, uh, have had to handle some of those. Um, see, it's not just the risk with any influencer. It's, it's always a risk whenever you are taking any, any brand ambassador on a brand for that matter. So, um, I would say, I would say, uh, the way you deal with brand ambassadors, where you have a much broader, uh, you know, sort of, uh, association and risk associated in this case, I think consumers are also possibly matured enough to, you know, segregate. Uh, segregate the brands from uh, from the celebrities, but yeah, a lot of times there are backlashes that you know. Uh, uh, first thing they would see is let's say somebody associated somebody from somewhere says ban this brand or I boycott this brand, etc. Uh, but having said that, the best way to handle that typically, especially in an influencer campaign, is you know you simply ignore it and it dies its own death. Tip Typically with every Twitter or tweet, any, any such controversy, you actually wait for it to die its own death, which is where, I mean, we also feel safer when we are working with micro influencers where the credit, uh, you know, a lot of times they make a more credible statement and also the risk associated in that case is much lesser. But yeah, having said that, typically when you choose a, a macro influencer, normally a celeb influencer, typically you definitely choose somebody who has least amount of, you know, such baggages, I would say. So uh, I this think, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. So typically, Perfect. you uh, always, Vinod, please, please go on, please go on. Yes. No, no, that's that's okay, Miss Binani. Same question trends, and is it is it so fragile sometimes that brands have to, you know, I mean, also something very new for the brands, they are like torn between taking the stand and just. Letting it go, you 
So first of all, Rohel, I don't think it's a risk only linked to influencers. I mean, we've all seen what happened with the Tanish cat recently. So, you know, even brand communication, which is vetted and tested, can be fragile in today's time. So I think um, it's the risk with, with a marketing team, you know. So I honestly think it's about a marketing team's or a brand's decision to say that they want to chart a course and then be authentic about it. And like Vineet said, it needs to be a two-way com communication in today's time. I mean, if you're just talking one way to your audience, it's almost like if, you know, we sit in this conversation in this, in this panel and we don't interact at any point with the audiences through a QA, and a then it's a one-sided conversation versus, you know, at some point us coming back and saying that we want to answer the questions that the audiences are throwing in. So any time, like, you know, you sign up for a two-way communication, there are going to be risk attached. But I think it's about the brand's willingness to, you know, stay true to the path that they have, you know, decided to go on and be absolutely not doing it from a tokenism perspective, but having a very genuine intent to be authentic about their intent and, you know, acting through, like, you know, to the end, seeing what they have decided to go through. I mean, you take brands like Nike today. I mean, um, if you remember the campaign that happened last year, people burned the shoes, but the amount of respect that the brand has gained has been amazing. So I don't think the risk is sitting only with influencers. It's sitting everywhere whenever the brand wants to have a two-way communication. From a trends perspective, right. like um, I think there are different things happening. I mean, influencer marketing is not new. I mean, 10 years back, I used to work with Diesel and uh, Salman Khan used to wear uh, Diesel denim jackets in movies and people used to come to our stores saying that uh, buy wali jacket khareedne ko. you know? I mean, it's just that the phenomenon of influencer marketing has moved to digital today um and hence because it's moved to digital today you can see it classified between like you know your tiers of celebrities micro influencers nano influencers and everybody is now trying to create a space for themselves in with their content strategy i think the more disruptive influencers are with what they are trying to do the more they are going to stand out. And I think that disruption is what's going to create trends of the future. Right. Uh, uh, Ms. Kapila, for you, a different question that uh, when brands, for example, choose an influencer and the, there's a certain kind of, uh, you know, uh, maybe a controversy happens, uh, is it difficult for the influencer to disassociate? I mean, is there always a concern for influencers that, you know, I may be responsible for, uh, you know, putting the brand into a challenging spot. Does that thought uh, kind of trouble the influencer at times? Do you think that is because of late, whatever has happened, do you think those are possibilities that could that trouble influencers at times? Well, I personally enjoy the fact that content creation is a shared responsibility between the content creator and the audience that is there. Second, it is very important for a content creator to be analytical and to aware its own audience to as to what is happening and what is the per perception behind the content that is there. I keep on talking about the content style that I drive with my audience and I keep, keep in having that interaction where I can understand and tell them that it's a shared responsibility. So that brings in the question that um, prevention is better than cure. <laughs> That's what I believe in. So it's very important to uh, make sure that our content remains clean our content is oriented uh, towards building inspiration and motivation to the crowd that we are adhering to and that would not eliminate the risk but that would always make a content creator be more uh, you know cautious towards the the job that we have we have a very uncertain job uh, i don't know how many brand endorsement will i have next month it's uncertain i don't have a number Again, uh, I, I as an influencer do not have to have an age bar or a qualification bar to jump into this field. So, uh, you know, having that conversation, communication and being aware is very, very important. Right. Great. Uh, Mr. Madhavan, uh, quickly, what are your uh, predictions uh, as far as the upcoming trends of influencer marketing, you know, of using influencers in marketing is concerned? Uh, I think uh, the concept of celebrity marketing has now 
the new new space is influencer marketing because uh, the main main reason is celebrities like no no offense to anyone here mostly a denial of them being an influencer right and then them creating content on the platform right because they they mostly seen on big screens and big uh, television screens etc etc uh, but on the influencer side the new trends i think uh, the the day like you know um, right now it is more of in every plan there is ma- macro influencers being a part of every campaign but i think the future is going to be micro and nano influencers um having said that because uh, when i say influencers i don't really call them influencers i'll call them content creators and these are the space these are the uh, people who will actually go out and spread the news because um for the biggest the biggest brands uh, mostly their target audience is always not tier 1 it is always tier 2 tier 3 and tier 4 and uh, to have uh, a content that is already existing too much of polished content uh, going in the tier 4 space uh, they're not ready to accept it but in the moving future uh, there will be a change and there will be a change with uh, with the concept of influ- like people looking at influencers uh, as only the top guys can influence my brand uh, it, the change is happening already but i think the acceptance will happen in the course of uh, time where people will accept that okay not only the macro and the super macro the celebrities can um sort of understand our brand so for example like we need to say that you know even in our slice campaign like it starts off with katrina kaif but it goes down mm-hmm. bottom right it, it it does not just stop with katrina it stop it starts from katrina but it goes to the bottom of the bottom of the pyramid and all good brands are already adhering to it uh, there are few new companies that are coming in when like you know the acceptance time takes time the acceptance takes time so i think eventually that will be the new future for influencer marketing so that basically means new jobs uh, to be honest that basically means more uh, spending in the economy and more income for the people who are entering into the space so uh, a person who desire to have a 20000 25000 job to probably can earn through a right uh, you know content creation so yeah and at their right. own Frank. Great. Uh, so, so I think we have ten minutes, and there are of question answers. So, I want to come to it. Uh, uh, so, I sorry, I had to get into my phone to get these questions. So, I want, my first question is to Mr. Sharma. Uh, there's a question. The the name is not given. Uh, how do you differentiate your approach between an EVC, which is a scripted ad, and an influencer message, which is more impromptu? Do you choose both, or you select one of it? i think it has to be a combination of it it is a combination of both so in tvc uh, while uh, you it, it's also to say that, that it can only be one message then that message has to be delivered in 30 seconds or 45 seconds that's about it so you will try and find the way to do it deliver it most effectively but as i said you will well in a tvc you will still try and find an insight which is sort of which spans across let's say six uh, uh, the entire population but eventually there are segments of that population and each of those segments behave differently and to connect more strongly with those individual segments you will pick up influencers and pick up passion points which are big for your brand where you feel you can have a strong connect with the brand and therefore you will try and develop a connect using influencers leveraging those passion points so it has to be a combination of both great uh, miss benani for you the question is um... How can brands measure ROI for uh, influencer marketing spends? Uh, most of the number times the numbers can support the top part of the funnel, but how can brands impact the lower end of the funnel? Uh, like you know, I mean that that's a question basically. Or oh. you know, for me, the best ROI to look at for influencer marketing is engagement. you know how much uh-huh. are people actually sharing your content you know what's the comments they are leaving on your con you know on your influencer content i think culmination of that is you know what works because if somebody is bothered to take a content you created with the influencers and shared with their set of friends the engagement that they have given you would be possibly like you know far more you know superior to like somebody just having had a p- passive view of the same influencer content so i personally believe that the roi is on influencer marketing should be you know netted out against the engagement that you get with the influencers 
great great uh, miss avasti for you the question is uh, do you think influencers can help you leverage already loyal audience uh, audiences to grow your business is this the strategy brands work on um see it really uh, sort of um, if if the audience is already loyal possibly i don't need to uh, no, don't need more influencers to reach out to them because loyalty is finally the ultimate dream that any brand would have uh influencer strategy for me i think uh it's it's more like a building building a frequency over there and especially getting to the consideration set of the people who are possibly more like the fence sitters and trying to make a choice among the brands and i would i would say that is the kind of audi audience that we are trying to reach out to so i wouldn't say that we are trying to reach out i mean at least i don't have that objective on my brands where i'm trying to allure the already loyal consumers it's more to reach out to the newer consumers or those fence sitters in the tg that are there that i'm uh, trying to consider in in this case uh also i i just thought i would try to answer the question that was given to uh, miss uh, binani um what sure. uh, uh, you know uh, how you can measure is of course the engagement levels the second piece is for the brands which already have their own di direct to consumer kind of website that actually also can be another source of uh, knowing whether direct sales is happening or not um you know uh, depending on where the campaign is and because of that is there a, a blip in the sales so it's a little easier for the brands which are uh, are also uh, having their own sale from their own website to measure otherwise typically engagement is the main measure where you know whether the campaign is working or not or the influencer is working or not right uh, miss kapila for you the question is uh, these are anonymous questions uh, is there a is there a formula is there a playbook for creating sticky content content that is engaging yes there is a formula there is a secret that i want to reveal uh, the formula is consistency relatability mm -hmm. and again talking back to your people and understanding what did they like what do they want to do mm -hmm. want to see and having that frequent connect i i see that connect people connect but the frequency the consistency sometimes slips slips and slipping it for one hour please think that there are 10000 other people who are ready to make the same content and get that visibility so if it's it, it's you or or it's somebody else so this is the secret formula <laughs> right right uh, uh for you mr madhavan uh how do you ensure that uh, influencer marketing meets the brand uh, marketing objectives effectively and affordably how much does uh, how much uh, is it shown in the actual business i mean to say uh, the question is that uh, does the brand how do you make brands uh, effectively choose influencers that's basically the question what is the way to do it a uh, beautiful question i think it's it's a it's a extended question to the roi question uh, right I, yeah having said that how do we like any initially choose the right influencers is uh, first understanding the brand's brief right uh, if the brand says it's a launch campaign i want to reach out to a massive audience say say pan india audience but for a brand like uh, uh, for for binani miss binani it was it will be more like a very niche audience it'll not be like a pan india audience right but for a person uh, who's heading uh, godrej or say pepsi uh for them when they launch something it is massive right they want they want every person to know in the world that this is launched and go buy it tomorrow uh same with an application or same with somebody or something else uh first is to understand the brief of the brand and second is to uh understand not only the brief but also what are the type of people right for example if, if the brand is not connecting to somebody in the sports category or somebody in the uh comedy category right it is it is more like a serious brand right so we need to understand the genre of content creators that we really want to be a part of right so for example quaker oats i cannot put a uh, comedy funny person in the in the platform and it is it is a it is not a logical choice but of course if i put a mommy blogger or a fitness person or a chef it is more like a con like a logical influencer without any second thoughts right um having said that uh moving on to the third space is of course then the the basic reach and the engagement rate and the you know the follower base etc etc is the third uh, segment of 
choosing the right influencer. Now, once the influencer is chosen and this list of influencers, it is mostly when, when it comes to influencer marketing, it is not one influencer uh, part of a campaign. It is always a set of few influencers a part of a campaign for each platform. Say Instagram, a set of five, five or six influencers and can go up to like 50, 100 influencers. And then you have a YouTube strategy, then you have a Twitter strategy, then you have a TikTok or for now MX Takata or Share Chat Watch or Triller kind of a platforms. Uh, those like every platform has different set of influencers that that have uh, engagement uh, and loyalty through audiences. Um, and once a campaign is executed, now the question is, how do we really measure and how do we say that this this is successful, right? So uh, for brands. Uh, who, whose, whose objective is only branding, of course, it is very, uh, very easily, uh, like, you know, calculated that it is you, your success is on the basis of how many views have been generated, how many comments and how many shares have been generated. So the branding space is much more easier. Uh, then the second phase, which many agencies, uh, Sort of struggle and uh, sort of not only agencies but also brands struggle to find that is the performance driven marketing through influencers like how many sales are actually happening how many installs are actually happening to one influencer and how much am i actually spending so what is my cost per install what is my cost per click what is my cost per sale or cost per so what is my cost per lead because they're they're at a space where they don't need any more branding right their their brand is already like everybody knows about their brand they what they care about is the sales the roi from the influencer and uh, for that we use our own internal tool which we share with the brand only uh, uh, which is a internal tool that is uh, that tracks not only the sales the clicks but also helps to retarget uh, the influencers the 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 audiences right so which is uh, which is where we we call this as a mad recall value, right? So um, you have to have that recall with the audience unless until there's a recall and you spend a month spend money once and then you think that you've done a great campaign. But unless and until there's a recall in that campaign after a period, uh, it is not a successful campaign. So for that, you need really strong tools, right? So that is that is how we we sort of try to maintain that balance. In terms of uh, like you know that the tool that we provide to our internal clients, and so that they they are happy, and then it it, it sticks to their backend, and whatever is happening it happens in real time at their dashboard. So it's a, it's a it's a very major thing, right? So uh, everything happens in real time. Whatever happens, they see it. So that's why in the beginning, also if you if you remember, I've so I've said that we believe in data driven influencer marketing. So data driven influencer right. marketing is the future, not selecting influencers just uh, giving them money and expecting just them. Yes. yeah so yes. That is data okay. thank you so much i mean we're just out of time but i want to thank all the panelists for sharing the thoughts and especially Ma our presenting partner matt Improvements, yeah. for putting this together thank you very much for joining us thanks thank you, so much. thank you thank you so much i think uh, thank you so much everyone. uh it was a great connecting we'll connect offline also uh, we'll we'll shoot you a mail and I'll probably ping you myself. Thanks. It was a great learning from you all. We need thanks. Thanks, we need thanks so much, Shri. Thanks, Kushbu. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, thanks, everyone. It was great to connect Thank with you. everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think you guys also enjoyed, and I think that there are more questions fl flowing in. I think. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think it was a good, good. Maybe take it offline and send it across. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Have a great day, guys. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.